everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in making this sunstream pendant featuring our new Wave Trio beads. If you need any materials, check out the list below to shop with us online. So the first thing that we're going to do for our sunstream after laying out our materials, we are using 10 of our Wave Trios. I'm using the antique silver. I use the antique copper in the example. I have blue zircon 6mm disco ball rounds and apricot in the example. I have aqua opal 4mm bicones and stuck with the apricot in the example here. And then th the 8 OC beads I'll be using are the opaque Ceylon white AB or the Ceylon glaze. And then I have some 11 OC beads in Duracoat galvanized champagne. A 14 millimeter Rivoli will sit in the middle, and in both of these examples, I am using the resin Rivoli, the high-end resin Rivoli, in the opal color. So to begin, we're going to start from the interior and work our way out. For the interior section, I'm going to pick up one 8O seed bead, and then I'm going to face my wave trios, so they are facing toward the interior, with a four millimeter bicone sitting in the middle of one of the first holes. I'm going to repeat this a total of five times till I have 10 of my quad or 10 of my wave trios in and one eight oh separating out each. Pick up a wave trio, put on your four millimeter, and then put a wave trio on so it's encapsulating that four millimeter bicone. I have two of them on, and you'll notice I'm just holding the end of my thread. The reason that I'm holding the end of my thread is because I'm going to go through and tie this into a knot to start my opening loop. I'm going to repeat the same thing three more times till I have my circle unit. After you're done with this first introductory set of five, you're going to go ahead and tie it into a circle. Now it's going to look a little funky when you're tying the end and into a circle and I've left about two to three inches of thread at the end so I can tie onto that thread as we exit and finish up the piece. Now you'll see it's kind of sitting like I said a little funky. We're going to end up making it behave by pushing it back along the sides here so that way it lines up next to one another. From here I want you to take your needle and thread and go through the next 8O CB. So you have your knot there. You're going to sew through the next 8O, the next bicone, and wave trio combination, and out the following 8O. So you're out the second 8O in the design. From here, we're going to add some 11O C beads. To add our 11O C beads, I want you to put five on to your thread and needle. These five will go in and create the setting for me to do my Rivoli. Coming out of the 8 OC bead, I'm going to add five of my 11s onto my needle, circle back through that same 8 OC bead, as well as your next grouping of your wave trio, bicone wave trio, and out the next 8 O. When you pull that, it's going to put this out almost like a floral look. It looks really pretty along the side, and you can actually repeat this and stop with this design in multiple places. Again, five more seed beads go on, back through the 8-0 that my thread is coming out of, and the whole way over to the next 8-0 seed bead. At this point, we are not through any of the second or third holes of our wave trio. We're just continuing through the first. I'm going to do this three more times to get my setting for my bezel to sit inside. Adding in my fifth and final grouping of my seed beads there, I sewed through the 8 that my thread was coming out of and then back over to that first 8 o seed bead. From here, I'm going to step up. So I want to step up, so I'm coming out of bead number three along that grouping of my five 11 seed beads. So I have my thread and needle going through beads one, two, and through bead number three. Now it's always going to be going now through that bead number three or that fifth bead in this section. So when you're looking through that fifth bead here, that's where we're going to go through. From here, we're gonna add one, two, and three 11 O's between each one of that third or that point bead. So I'm gonna take one, two, three 11 O's, sewing out that 11 O at the top 
and I'm going to go into the next 11 0 which is actually backtracking. You want to make sure whatever side your thread is going out of, that's the side that you sew onto. Make sure that goes to the top of the project and in will start the bail. Three more into your next one of your group of five. And you're just going into that third bead. I have two more times to do this. And I'm going to get ready with my Rivoli and just kind of set it right in the middle there. And in this blue color, I was doing these almost to look like frost. So I have the sun stream and kind of the frost stream. Three go on and on to the next one here. And then as I go back through to my first one, I'm going to get ready for my first 11 OC beads to go in and connect. When you do so, you're going to go back through the first C bead that your thread was coming out of. So I'm going back through that top C bead. And you see I'm pushing down on the Rivoli. That's to make sure as I pull, those C beads, you can see, are going to encapsulate and close in, making the perfect little bezel around the piece. Now I'm going to tighten up that bezel. Anytime that you do a bezel and you have seed beads around it, it's always a great idea to take your thread and needle back through all of this bezel one more time. So I'm going to sew through, now I'm holding the Rivoli in place, and I'm going to sew through and tighten up all these beads, which will push the Rivoli down and kind of let it nestle in place as I go around the design, reinforcing that top of the bezel. This really closes that up gets rid of any additional thread that I have showing, and tightens up the piece. Once you come back around to the start, what we want to do is go down through beads three and four along one of your grouping of five 11 OC beads. I'm going to take my thread and needle down beads number four and five, and as I do so, pull on the thread, not the needle, and give a nice tight yank to tighten up that bezel. From here, step down into your 8 OC bead, as well as down into your wave trio, 4 millimeter bicone, wave trio, and out. You don't want to go through the next 8 OC bead. Your needle is naturally going to want to do so. So what you can do is sew through the next 8 O, and then just sew out of it and up. Sometimes it's easier to sew back out of the bead than it is to get your needle to come out before it. From here, we're going to step up into our second hole of our wave trios. We're going to go through the second hole of the wave trios, and what we're going to do now is catch on to that second hole with two 11 or, or I'm sorry, three 11 OC beads, and then go through the 8 Coming out that middle, one, two, and three of my 11 OC beads go onto my thread and needle, and I'm going to sew through the 8 OC bead. When I sew through the 8 OC bead, I want to try to make sure that my thread comes out right after the 8 O. Pick up three more beads and on to your next two of your wave trios and sew right through. Coming out again, this is just going to keep repeating to get those two beads, or those three beads rather, in place. Three beads go on, sew through your next 8 OC bead. When you sew through the next 8 OC bead then, you're going to add three more and sew through the next wave trio two holes. So I'm going to go the whole way around now, adding in my two C beads here that are going to catch between there. For the next one, we're going to go in and add our six millimeter disco ball bead. For our next step, I'm adding in my last three C beads here connecting on to that first hole of the wave trios that my thread was coming out of. And then I'm also going to sew through the first two 11 OC beads that I added. That puts all of those three groupings in place here and gets me set up to go through and add my disco ball bead. Coming out between beads two and three that you added along the side here, what you're gonna do is add one more 11 O one of our disco balls, and remember that's that blue zircon color, one more 11 ohm. Let that drop down next to the design. So back through 
the disco ball, not through the 11 out. We'll come back and attach and sew through that as we do the exterior row. Pull down, making sure that there's not any extra thread showing. Add one more of your 11 0 seat beads and pick up their beads two and three and sew through. So you're always gonna have one bead next to the 8 0 bead that you're not sewing through. You're gonna sew through the next two as well as through your wave trio. Once you sew through there and add your beads, you're gonna come out the other side. And when you come out the other side, you're going to repeat. When you repeat here, see how it automatically went through the first bead? You wanna make sure to sew through the second 11 OC bead as well. Come out between the second and third 11 there. Add one 11, one of your six millimeter disco ball beads. Then again, one 11, back down through the disco ball. Push that disco ball next to the piece Sometimes you have to pull up on the 11 OC bead above and then pull your thread. Add one more 11 and again skip bead number one in that grouping of three and sew through beads two and three. At the same time you can wiggle your needle through the center hole right there you can see of your wave trios through that middle hole and out. And most of the time again when it goes through the wave trio it'll also go through that first seat bead and then you'll just need to sew through the second one as well. I have two of these beads on and you can see you need a total of five beads on your thread and needles here. So I'm going to go back around and add three more of my disco balls in between each of my second holes of my wave trio bead. After adding in all of your six millimeter disco balls you're going to be coming out of one of your wave trios. You're coming out through the second hole. So I added this last disco ball and I'm coming out after those two 11 OC beads through my wave trio. I'm going to step up again, this time through just one hole of my wave trio there. So I'm stepping up to hole number three of my wave trio. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a series of our bicones between our wave trios that sit in the center. And then we're going to add five of our 11 OC beads. So I'm going to pick up one of my four millimeter bicones, sew into the second wave trio. And just kind of pull tightly to pop your bicone in there. Grab five of your 11 OC beads. And what this is going to do is create that bridge that, co that connects to the 11 OC bead that sits on top of that mirrored disco ball. So one, two, three four, five, and then you're going to catch on to that 11 -0 that sits at the top. Remember we didn't sew back through there, it worked to anchor the bead in place. Five more after it. And then into your next one of your wave trios. Through, through the first one, pick up the bicone, sew through the second one, and then continue on. You're going to do this the whole way along the project to create these nice little kind of beams along our sunstream. After that, we're gonna go back in and reinforce it and add our just white eight OC beads to the top to mirror our nice Rivoli in the center. As you finish up your five 11 OC beads as well as your bicone, you're gonna be coming through that first bicone that you added and out through those wave trios. From here, we're gonna go around the outer edge, which is gonna kind of tighten that up and create those nice peaks. We're going to be adding one 8 OC bead in between the grouping of five of our 11 O's. So we have our five 11 O's that we just added that I'm gonna sew back through. And on our first go round, we sewed through the 11 OC bead that sat on top of the disco ball. This time, we're gonna add one of our 8 OC beads and then sew down through those five C beads again. That eight OC bead just sits at the top, creating a nice little point. If you want to and you have a two or a three millimeter crystal, you can also add those to the point. Sew through the next bicone wave trio bicone combination, 
and then straight up through those five C beads. We're going to continue adding these as we go the whole way around. And then for our final step, what we are going to do is we are going to go in and add just a wire guard so that way we have a nice top to our pendant to catch on to. So I'm going to continue going in, sewing through all of these, and adding that 8 OC bead to the top of the piece. For your final step, you're going to want to add your wire guard. I'm coming out that first 8 OC bead that I added on the piece. Keep in mind this is also a beautiful, beautiful piece that could be a pin or a brooch as well as a component. And I'm going to add on to my thread and needle one 11 OC bead, one of my wire guards in my silver color, back down through the wire guard on the other side, and I'm going to put this on a chain. So I'm going to use a soldered six millimeter jump ring, and I'm going to add that onto my thread and needle right now, which is going to sit in between my wire guard. After, I'm going to add one more 11 OC bead, and then sew back through the 8 OC bead that your thread was originally coming out of. And that just gives it such a nice little top there. I'm going to reinforce this one more time, sewing back through the 11 and the wire guard, back down through the wire guard, through the ring, through the 11 OC bead, and bring my needle out. Once that's out, I'm going to go back through the 8 one last time. I'm going to sew down through my grouping of five C beads that sits next. And I'm going to work my thread and needle now back to the center or the start of the project so I can go in and tie off my thread ends. One thing that's really cool about this pendant or this piece is that it's pretty much reversible. So you can see how different it looks based on the different colors when you're looking at the fun kind of sun colors and the warm colors versus kind of those icy tones as well. And it's really fun to see that the only thing that changed was the six millimeter and the four millimeter bicone. So there's tons of options with these exact same beads, any color really of your wave trio, and you can have fun creating the sunstream pendant. Thanks so much for watching and joining me in making this sunstream pendant. Thanks also to our viewers on twitch.tv slash Potomac Beads that had fun creating and naming the piece with me. As always, if you need any supplies, check out the links below to shop with us online at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. Remember also comment below and say whether or not you like the warm tones of that apricot color or the colder tones, the icy tones of that blue zircon. Also a fun name for the blue zircon one, you guys could comment below. Keep in line the comments and the thumbs up and also subscribing help to build this amazing YouTube community that we have as well as our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making, check that out. As always, thanks so much and enjoy your new pendant.